This is the veneer soil moisture sensor. Um, it's used uh, to measure moisture content in soil. So you might use it uh, in an agricultural setting. Uh, that you know, soil moisture would be important, and so you you could actually uh, monitor um, the soil under a plant, see what happens there. Uh, you might use it in bottle biology. So you've got a uh, one of your columns, and you want to monitor that uh, soil moisture content. So um, that's what you use it for. Uh, how it works, uh, it actually measures the capacitance of the soil. And what happens is, is that the moisture content of the soil changes the capacitance. And so it's actually using, it's measuring the dielectric permittivity of the soil and it's proportional to uh, what happened, you know, how much moisture there is. And uh, so, um, so by changing the moisture um, in the section of the probe, you, you're changing what the reading is. Now the reading on the sensor is actually reading in the um, volumetric water content of the soil. And it reads zero to 45%. Now this causes issues sometimes. You're like, well, why in the world would a soil that is really wet, why does it read 45%? Well, the thing is you have to think about what, what is soil. Um, soil is made up by, you've got minerals, you've got some organic content, and, uh, and there's also spaces. And so you've got pore spaces in there. It's not a solid piece. Um, and what happens is, is that the, if you add moisture to the soil, you're filling up those pore spaces. And uh, you can't have the soil be 100% water. It's just not possible. And uh, so that's why it reads in, in that realm. So it's a, it's a common um, unit that would be used in uh, measuring soil moisture content. So uh, to use the sensor, uh, we need to place it into the soil. And uh, we use it um, by putting it in horizontally. Um, the, the kind of the natural uh, inclination might be just to take it and just jam it into the soil. You don't want to do that. Um, you want to have it go in sideways this way um, because that way you get a better reading um, and because you're using a, a kind of a, a slice of the soil down below there and it needs to, to go in that way. So um, let's go outside and I'll show you a real world case of how you would use this uh, in the environment. I'd like to show you uh, a kind of a common use case with this and how you would place it in the ground out in the field. And uh, so what I've done is I have a kind of a sharp uh, spade here with a, like a trenching shovel. And this will allow me to put a kind of a little groove in the ground where I can put the, um, the soil moisture sensor down into that groove. And so I, there's some technique to this and so it's important to know how to be able to do this. So to, uh, to start with, uh, what I'm going to do is basically open up a, a, a trench uh, in the ground here. So I'm just going to kind of press down a little bit there, kind of open this up just a little bit, just wide enough that I can get the soil moisture sensor down in there on its side. And then I will take the soil moisture sensor and I place it down into the hole gently on its side there. And then what I need to do is firm the soil up around the, the sensor uh, to the same compaction as the soil around it. So that may take a little bit to be able to kind of compact it back around there. So I just press down kind of gently, kind of pack it back in there. And now I have my reading. Another thing to be careful with the soil moisture sensor is removal of the sensor from the ground. Uh, kind of the natural inclination would be to just grab the wire and yank it out. You want to be careful because if you've packed it down nicely, it could be in there fairly tightly. So you may need to kind of dig it out a little bit to be able to get to it so that you can kind of ease it out of the ground here without yanking the wires. So we've seen how to place the soil moisture sensor out in the field. Um, but what I've done here is I have a little plastic bin here and I've um, put some soil in here and it's loose soil from the garden. And uh, so I'm going to use it just to be able to make some measurements inside here. So I'm just going to put it down here. And I need to place the, the sensor into this soil much like I did out in the field. Now this is very loose soil. So I, it's going to go into a trench but because it's loose enough, I can actually kind of dig kind of a slightly trench here and, and place it in there sideways because it's loose enough that I can actually do this. And so I'm going to place it down in there like that. And then I will put the soil around it. And then 
like we said out there, it needs to be packed down to about the same compaction as the soil around it to be able to do the, the measurement. Now that I have the sensor in the soil, uh, I'm going to plug it into the LabQuest. And now I end up with a reading of getting 9.3% there, thereabouts. So that's my soil is fairly dry on uh, some, some garden soil that I had. And um, so that I could just read a meter and be able to go around and uh, measure different values uh, of soil at different places. Often, like in this case, you might be interested in just individual reading. So you might just read it off the meter itself at this point. Uh, you could set it up maybe with a selected events mode where you would measure the soil moisture content maybe in different areas if you wanted to. Um, you can do it over time if you wanted to. So this is where you might go in and set it up for, for a long period of time. Why don't I at least show you how you might do that one, uh, to set it up. We we'll probably won't actually do a run on this one, but we might set it up. So I'll show you how you do that. Take a look at what the default collection parameters are, though. Uh, so for this one, it's a time-based one sample per second for 90 seconds. Uh, I might want to change that. So you know, one use case might be to monitor the soil moisture content over a period of time. And uh, so let's suppose I wanted to measure a sample for 24 hours. And uh, so if I wanted to do that, I can go up and change that by tapping on the uh, collection parameters there. Uh, time-based, leave that the same. Uh, let me do this. I'm going to change my duration, and I want to do, say, 24 hours. And then uh, maybe I want to do, I don't know, four samples an hour, once every 15 minutes, and so I can say done, and then I hit OK. And what would happen now is if I hit collect, it would collect data for 24 hours, once every 15 minutes. And I might have a situation where I have a heat lamp or something on my soil sample, so I'm drying it out and could measure uh, that effect over a period of time. So uh, let's remove this again from the soil here. and. Um, we need to be careful. We don't want these students just to yank this out. We talked about that outside, but uh, so we can kind of dig it out here, pull it out here, kind of brush it off, and now we're we're good to go there. So, so again, uh, the soil moisture sensor uh, it would be very useful in agricultural setting, horticulture, uh, biology, and this could be really nice in, in a situation where students want to do some kind of inquiry activity where they are monitoring the growth of a plant and in, in using it to, to adjust the soil moisture content and be able to do that. So, you know, inquiry is a big thing that uh, is happening now and uh, so this would be a great sensor uh, for those kinds of activities.